Being aesthetic is something I've always wanted to achieve since I started working out about three years ago. In its simplest form, it's having a lot of muscle mass with a low body fat percentage, having very defined, proportional, and symmetrical muscles. How low you want to go is up to you. I think there are very impressive physiques from anywhere between sub 10 up to 15%. It also means being very strong yet very functional. Powerlifting to develop raw strength on compound movements, bodybuilding to target one specific muscle at a time, and still being flexible and athletic enough to train calisthenics in as well. To do a quick checklist, visually being aesthetic is having broad shoulders with a slim waist and abs, defined quads and chest, and of course a chiseled back. And these two. Another way I would describe it is the main character build. Typically the protagonist in your favorite show or movie isn't overwhelmingly big, but isn't too small either. It's a happy medium that's very hard to achieve. This is because the only way to naturally show veins in tons of definition is being very lean, but the best way to build enough muscle to define in the first place is to always eat over your maintenance, getting rid of the veins, and definition. Depending on your starting point, you're either skinny, overweight, or skinny fat like me. That determines the first direction you go in, either eating in a big surplus or trying to cut down. I tried to gain as much weight as possible while lifting heavy at the same time. Then switch to smaller portions with fasting and workouts with more cardio and hypertrophy focused exercises. For cutting, my split typically has three days of heavy lifting and bodybuilding with one to two rest days and three days of calisthenics and some boxing for cardio. It doesn't really matter if you jump rope or play basketball for a bit, I just enjoy keeping martial arts in my routine because it's something I've done for a very long time and I really recommend trying it if you haven't. It's great for recovery, but it's also good for discipline that you can apply to the gym. For rest days, having a set schedule can be beneficial, but in my experience, sometimes it's just better to go off how your body feels. If you're feeling strong and go for six days in a row, great. If you really need the three rest days that week because you're not feeling 100%, that's okay too. It's not going to kill your gains, remember that all of your growth happens during rest. I get it though, it's hard because when you're pushing yourself during a workout you feel accomplished, making progress. Then if you have to force a day off for whatever reason, you almost feel guilty, like doing nothing is slowly withering away your muscle mass, even though it doesn't work like that. Just don't overdo it and try to enjoy the days off. The gym isn't everything life has to offer. Getting back to the main point of the video, just like sculptures of Greek gods depicted in the real world, they start with a ton of stone, a lot of which will go to waste, then after having that base, you chisel off bit by bit to shape the statue to your liking. It just depends on how skilled and knowledgeable of a sculptor you are. Obviously, I'm not saying everybody can just bulk and cut and be done or where you want to be. It's changing your lifestyle as a whole. Setting habits in place, one by one, will actually get you to where you want to be, rather than going hard on some 30 day challenge. The 21 day habit rule has been up in the air for being real or just a myth. Either way, I've seen it work in my own life. Getting over the first couple weeks is tough, then the habit slowly gets easier and more natural. An example instead of trying to cut for 30 days, then yo-yo right back to where you started, is making small changes, in quotation marks, that are huge. For myself, I wasn't drinking enough water, so I tried to drink this big jug that I got every day. My diet was still very loose, but then I tracked calories. My diet was somewhat unhealthy, but now I was eating at maintenance and drinking almost a gallon of water every day. This is over months of time, but it's so crucial to truly making progress. You can't just force everything to be perfect in a week. Your diet will dictate the outcome of how aesthetic you will actually become, but the way you train can't be overlooked either. I always say that I've been working out for three years now, and that's true, it's when I started for the first time. I would say it's only been a year now of really understanding how to do it right, how to bring intensity to 100%, how important it is to have really good form and rep out lighter weight than it is to actually move weight because you physically can. I want to go over a few key tips of training that made huge differences in progress, getting rid of pretty much every plateau I had. First is technique. This you can really improve from watching videos, but it's also just from tons of practice and repetition. It's building the mind-muscle connection stronger like it's a muscle itself. Ego lifting kills your progress. Slow down, 
You don't need to finish sets in five minutes. Take your time and focus on where you should be squeezing and how fast the movement should be. Doing three sets of eight isn't going to do anything if you're not approaching it the right way. This leads us into junk volume. Junk volume is extra sets of exercises that isn't resulting in more muscle growth. It's basically beating on something that's already dead or worn out. If you're on a pull day, you don't need five different variations of rows for your lats. If you're doing this, I recommend trying two vertical pulls like pull-ups and pull-downs and one variation of rowing, either just seated cable or t-bar, it doesn't really matter. With enough intensity and weight that brings you to absolute failure, anywhere between 8 to 15 reps, you really don't need more than that. For more info on minimalist training, I highly recommend you check out Juan He's channel. The link will be in the description below, he goes really into depth on this and can explain it way better than I can. The last thing I want to go over is my current split that I found the most success with. I try to take two rest days a week, but if that doesn't happen, this is my favorite sixth day. A hybrid of powerlifting, bodybuilding, and calisthenics to get the best of both worlds. For an example, I'll go over a leg day to go into it a little further. After warming up, I always start with a really heavy compound, usually four sets, not going higher than eight reps. I also always pre-exhaust the muscle that I'm going to be targeting the most. So for most leg days, that's just quads. So I'll start off and I'll warm up and then I'll do two by 15 on quad extensions for pretty light weight just to rep it out. I can see why this wouldn't be the best if you want to conserve energy and go for a heavy one rep max or if you're trying to get your weight up. But in my opinion, it's the best way to just grow that muscle the fastest. After squatting, I go into something to hit the hamstrings, usually always split squats, either with a Smith machine or dumbbells. I never really hit them directly with hamstring curls just because they're usually always really sore after this anyway and in my opinion if your main goal is training aesthetics it's very hard to get very visible hamstrings without being very lean almost unhealthy so I just kind of train my whole leg and focus on quads mainly I don't always do this but usually how it plays out is I'll do one powerlifting movement one bodybuilding movement and then something calisthenic Recently, my most favorite finisher to add is a short I just posted about goblet squats. I think they're highly underrated and should definitely be in your routine if they're not. As for calves, I never really trained calves just because I was blessed with the genetics, but if you have underdeveloped calves, definitely add something in at the end. That's pretty much it on this guide on how to become more aesthetic. Of course, I could go into more depth, but it really doesn't have to be that complicated. Once you have a plan in place, it's just a matter of how much dedication you want to put into it. It's so easy for people to get caught up in the idea of cutting off weight and looking good for the summer, spending a couple months just going as hard as possible, just resulting in a yo-yo. But the reality is you should focus on how you're going to look in three years or six years. Your fitness journey isn't a time period. It's lifelong. Never stop grinding.